thank you all for coming down here. Uh, we have some plants in the room, so I'm going to come clean on that first. We have some folks who participated in this project and some folks who helped lead this project that are here today. So we have a lot of expertise around what I'm going to talk about. Before we start, though, I want to set the context in terms of learning and performance and innovation and why it's important. Um, right now, we're living through a major financial crisis. Probably will be a historical footnote at some point. Uh, we don't know yet what the impacts are. That's old news, we all know that. And NPR yesterday was doing an interview with people from the business school at the University of Wisconsin, and it was pretty interesting. Asked them what the impacts were that they had experienced and several other questions. One of the things they asked is, do you think that this is uh, a moment in time that we're going to go back to some normal, or is this a new normal? Is this a sea change? And people all agreed that this was a sea change, that we were going to come out of this in a different way than we've been before. And I wholeheartedly agree, but what I disagree with is that it's a financial crisis that's changing it. Uh, at least in terms of employment and employees and workplace learning and performance, I think what's changing our workplaces more rapidly than the financial crisis has to do with technology. And some of you have heard this uh, drumbeat from me before. However, I think it's really important to uh, underscore as we talk about innovation in the workplace. One of the main things that's happening is that we are shifting from a linear rate of change, especially around technology, linear being steady rate of growth, to an exponential rate of change where it shoots up at some point. Really, we're probably over a year. We're just starting to see that. Disruptive technology, technology that actually changes the way that we live our lives or do our daily work, is being introduced at a more rapid pace than ever before. Employees that are going to be successful are the ones who are able to blend left brain skills and right hearing skills. How many of you have read the Whole New Mind book by Daniel Pink? Great book, uh, talks a lot about this concept. So a few other books that I've read recently. One is The Singularity is Near by Ray Kurzweil. Anybody familiar with that one? And uh, what was the third one? Oh, Richard Florida's work around the creative class. Is anyone familiar with that? Okay, so a few folks are. All of this starts to draw a picture that the new employee is going to be an employee who is very creative, who's able to not just analyze data, but also synthesize. And the first year we did this, we had about 4% of the workforce participating. We have a workforce of about 1,000 people. And the second year, we expanded beyond project innovation to other kinds of discretionary effort. And we had 12% of our workforce participating. So in a time when people are already stretched and they're working at capacity, we have an increase in folks willing to participate more. I define employee engagement as uh, keeping turnover down. And our turnover is down and it's lowering. But I really don't feel like we can claim credit for that. There's a big recession. <laughs> we claim a lot of credit for lower turnover. Uh, but the other half of employee engagement is discretionary effort, going above and beyond your everyday job. And here at Pierce Transit, we've been feeling the effects of the recession for a couple of years now. We've had layoffs, we've had freezes on hiring, we've had freezes on travel, etc. So our employees are already doing more with less. Their work effort, their regular work effort, has been required to go up. And the first year we did this, we had about 4% of the workforce participating. We have a workforce of about 1,000 people. And the second year, we expanded beyond project innovation to other kinds of discretionary effort, and we had 12% of our workforce participating. And so project innovation was designed to produce R&D for Pierce Transit. And it did. It produced several recommendations that we've applied, and I'll talk about those in a few minutes. And then the third area that it was intended to address was talent development. It used a blended approach and provided just-in-time training, so people actually took skills away. And again, we did a volunteer process. We had a whole bunch of people volunteer, and then we staffed the teams with about seven people each, and intentionally did not staff them with our experts in that area. We have experts in high-capacity transit, and they're good. But what we wanted was folks who would look at it from a different perspective, who would take an innovative approach. And you know, if you got your expertise, that's a constraint in a lot of ways. So we went and we grabbed folks in the agency who had a passion and said, you're going to go figure this out. They were from all areas of the organization, all different levels, so those teams were a big mix. And then we put them in a room together for three days. And when we started that, people said, three days? Really? Three days? Uh, and it was pretty exciting. You can see the room looks different. Um, 
We have work up on the walls, we have posters, we make it a real exciting, inviting atmosphere. We open up this wall so we have both rooms totally full. The uh, effort of the three days is a lot of learning around how teams form and how projects develop. And then there's some additional information around transit or innovation or creativity that's a part of that. Uh, the purpose of doing it that way in a three-day launch is that we jumpstart the team development. You all have been part of teams that meet once a week, and after four months, they've had, what, 16 hours of meeting time. And then they're getting started. Or maybe not. <laughs> and so what we've done is we gave them that 16 hours and actually made it 20 hours right at the beginning. And so those teams knew each other well by the time they left the room. And they had developed a shared experience that was really positive. We intentionally created a positive, inclusive environment. It was, for me, it was like a camp experience, where people feel like they're a part of something, they feel like they are welcome, they feel that people know them when they walked in the room in the morning, people greeted them. It was really that very warm atmosphere that we want in the workplace that we don't always get. Um, sometimes we get Dilbert, what, what we want is camp. So. <laughs> so we created that. And then you can see the person speaking to the group is actually the board chair. This was not the first board chair I mentioned. This was our second cycle. But it was our board chair who comes and he speaks to the group and talks to them. And I actually, right before this session, was sitting in the back with him during the wrap-up of another, just visiting. And he was talking about how exciting this is and how, how much he appreciates this experience. And he gets up front and people ask him questions about how fearful they were to present because these folks present to the board at the end of their effort. And it was a great exchange. He was like, hey, I put my pants on the same way you do. And don't worry too much. And so it really personalized and humanized some of those strong leaders in our organization. After that three-day launch, the teams are sent out to research. And some of our team members have never used a computer before. So we provide just-in-time training. We give them computer classes or presentation skills classes or for the team leads, team leadership classes that they can opt in if they choose. It's part of our corporate university program, so it supplements that. And then they get regular support from their executive sponsor and from their internal process sponsor, which is me, uh, throughout the project. And they continue to meet and refine these recommendations. And then they come to the board and say, here's what we figured out. Some of those recommendations are small, but meaningful. Others are pretty large scale. And the board gets the chance to review those, talk about them, ask them hard questions, and then decide which ones they're All right, about. first off, we gotta have business results, right? Training has to be relevant. Learning has to be part of your core business. So for project innovation, this is actually one of our PI members on <laughs> Daffodil Day. It's not a totally relevant picture, but I love it. <laughs> uh, so we took uh, vandalism is one of our issues, vandalism in our bus shelters. And the cost from one year went from 145000 and the next year down to 32000 So that's a really tangible result. Uh, another one, we had a work process. Uh, it took 25 days to complete this process. Uh, we're just about to implement it at 8.5 days. So we reduced our cycle time. Uh, we actually are in a hiring freeze. And we did some work around OJI, some workers' comp, which is a big expense for us. And through Project Innovation, we began to explore some other opportunities. And we were able to double our staffing from one claims administrator to two claims administrators at zero cost. Now, can you attribute all of these results directly to Project Innovation? Not necessarily. Project Innovation often was a vehicle that gave voice to ideas that people had in the agency, but they hadn't had a big enough stage. So the idea had existed before. And then for a smaller proportion of the people who participate, it's transformative. Uh, we've had a couple people whose appearance changed, their skills changed, their role in the agency changed. And remember I said we intentionally didn't go find our highest performers? Well, some, now we have some high performers that we didn't know about before Project Innovation started, and they've become stars in the agency. And we actually did a lot of measurement of this project, and we measured four levels. We didn't do an ROI. But we did uh, satisfaction. Of course, those were great, because smile sheets usually are. And then we did learning. So we tested people on skills, agency knowledge, and practical uh, team-related kind of skills. And we did an application. And a lot of that was through supervisors and some of that work. And then we also tested agency culture. And we used